The film in which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy in which befell a lone amateur cave explorer. In 2020, a lone amateur cave explorer by the name of Sergei Kaziv tried to scale very often a cave located in Georgia's breakaway region of Abkhazia. Consider this no ordinary cave. With a max diving depth of 2,212 meters or 7,257 feet, very often a cave is considered the world's deepest natural cave system, with an average overall traverse time of over 8 days. Many in the spelunking community would even consider this to be the Mount Everest of cave exploring, giving you the idea that this is not for amateurs or for beginners. Sergei Kaziv was one of the brave souls that saw the cave as an adventure and a challenge to overcome. Unfortunately for Sergei though, he was an amateur, and he would embark on this adventure alone. Originally from the Russian city of Sochi, on the morning of November 1st, 2020, Sergei Kaziv said goodbye to his wife and kids, not telling them where he was going. His destination? The very deadly, very often a cave. His last destination. Sergei was considered very active and athletic as he was an avid mountain climber, though he had only gone spelunking only two times before, making him a very amateur cave diver at best. As soon as Sergei located the entrance, he would separate his belongings into three separate bags, hang a rope inside the cave and traverse down without a second thought. The first 400 meters of the cave can be very treacherous, known mainly for its tight winding corridors, as well as waterfalls and massive cave walls that one has to descend upon by himself. Sergei's then first stop would be at campsite 380 pictured here. At this campsite he would rest, eat pasta and ketchup, and plan his next descent to campsite 600. It would seem that Sergei was truly enjoying himself as he decided to stay at campsite 600 for an entire week. Again, here he would take advantage of eating pasta and ketchup, resting, sightseeing and planning his next descent, all the while only using screenshots from his phone in a crude paper map. And without any stirrups or any other vital rock climbing gear, he began to descend into the more technical parts of the cave system, where most of the water starts to collect and the temperature drops significantly. This is also where a very common killer in the sport comes into play. With the water being below freezing at these depths, hypothermia is a real common killer. As well as not having anyone there to help you through these passageways can be almost suicide. Undeterred in his pursuit of adventure, Sergei managed to descend an incredible 1100 meters or 3608 feet. Unfortunately though, without even a simple wetsuit, Sergei would soon find himself soaking wet and very, very cold in a dark place that he cannot escape from very fast. Now incredibly fatigued and just now realizing just how little equipment he had actually brought with himself, on top of being freezing cold and dripping wet, Sergei would then decide to himself that this would be where his journey would end, and he would begin to try to ascend back to the top. Unfortunately for Sergei, the severity of not bringing all of his equipment would now really rear its ugly head. Without the proper ropes, pulleys, and stirrups, on top of constantly being bombarded with ice cold water, Along with his entire body fraught with fatigue, the realization that Sergei was now stuck in one of the deepest caves in the world was now starting to seep in. Sergei would eventually give up on trying to escape. Still attached to his climbing line, he would then try to find a small corner in the cave, crawl into a fetal position, and would eventually succumb to his hypothermia. After a few days without seeing him come home, his wife would eventually report him missing. Though since he did not tell anyone where he was going, he would remain missing for the next 9 months. On the morning of August 4th, 2021, a group of spelunkers would be beginning their descent into the cave when they noticed a rope on the cave wall. Considered a gross violation in the cave rules, they decided to follow it to see where it led. At the 600 meter campsite, they found a pair of old moldy shoes and a very old bag of equipment. Growing ever more concerned, they decided to descend even further down, hoping that they would not find a body at the end. Unfortunately, still attached to the rope that he was trying to climb out on, they found Sergei's badly decomposed body still in the fetal position. Upon first sight of Sergei, the cave divers were actually dumbfounded on what little equipment Sergei actually had on him. The climbing equipment that was attached to Sergei was more suited for amateur outdoor rock climbing than the complexities of this cave. 
Next to Sergei was his backpack that had two cell phones and his Swiss army knife. He also had the map that he had been working on for over a year detailing on how he would be able to traverse the entire cave by himself. The identification of his body was made possible by a Russian organization known as Liza Alert. Upon this, Sergei's wife was then notified and a recovery team was then put together. Because of the incredible depth that his body was located at in the cave, along with the high complexity of the actual cave itself, would lead them to having to tell his wife that they would not be able to recover the body. Though not wanting to leave her husband in an entirely different country in a deep hole, she would then give the approval to have her husband cut up into pieces and exhumed that way. Let this story be a lesson to all of those look out there looking for a little adventure. Make sure to always be prepared and never go anywhere alone. Comment down below what you would have done in Sergei's shoes. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button and also the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.